Hello and welcome back into the studio. Today I'm going to do a dragonfly. Um, it's quite a famous image from my father, Pro Hard. He loved to do his dragonflies, and a lot of people have asked me to to have a go at doing a dragonfly here for you guys today. So I'm going to get a bit of colour going and see what we can do. So these are oil paints once again. Um, I'm just putting a nice alizarin crimson. We've got some burnt sienna and some beautiful yellow, Indian yellow there. And once again for my darks, I use the Prussian blue and a bit of burnt sienna. I just mix that up for my, my dirty colour. So for the darks rather than use a black. So this is all mixed with terps being oil colours. The prep on this is just a nice glossy um, background so it's quite slippery and, and uh, shiny to touch. So I'm going to get some of this colour on and we'll get it started. Yeah, so my dad, Pro, he, he's been doing these uh, images of dragonflies through his whole career. He, um, he was just fascinated by them and the life that they, they bring to the canvas. They've got a really interesting shape too, I guess. Um, so we've got that yellow on there. I'm going to put a little bit of brown around here, a bit of the burnt sienna. And that reacts really nicely with the Indian yellow. Just going to push that around a bit. So it's just thinned out with a little bit of terps, mineral terps always. And it doesn't really matter what brand of oil paint you use, it's all the same. Okay. That's looking good. So now I'm going to bring this alizarin crimson in, which is a really beautiful, deep and rich colour. A bit more tips. Um, you see they really work beautiful together. These are real Australian colours too, from the yellows to the brown and the reds. They all sort of work beautiful hand in hand. Okay, so now I've got that done. I'm going to get some nice dark colours around the edges. And this is sort of going to frame it almost, those dark colours. thought I'd shrunk when I had my lunch. It's only the seat that's gone down on me. All right. Here we go. So this dark's almost put a frame right around the whole lot. We're going to wipe all this back so it looks smooth and pretty. So because it's such a glossy background, this stuff's going to come off just nicely. There's a little bit of that dark through there, that doesn't matter. Bit of tissue. And 
It's pretty messy. So don't wear best clothes, that's for sure. You get the stuff all over you. So this has given us a nice sort of little frame and a focal point in the middle where a little fly is going to sit. Okay. So get rid of some of that. So always go through plenty of tissues doing this type of style. Actually, what I might do now. So just thin this down with a bit of terps. And a nice little sable brush here with a nice little pointy bit on it. Get that nice and nice and wet. I'm just going to put a few impressions of a bit of grass and stuff coming through here. So my dad started doing the dragonflies as a young fella. He, he walked outside one day, he saw a dead little insect on the ground, a little dragonfly and there was ants on it and he just saw that the movement the action and the harshness of Australia really and but then he saw a bit of a beauty in it I guess so he just continued painting dragonflies right through his career in all sorts of different settings and styles and he became quite famous for his his dragonflies so that's why I've been asked quite a few times to to show people how to do them. And this is just one style, obviously. So there we go, looks like a little bit of grass. And I, I'm just holding this really loose and dragging it up. And I always twirl the brush as I drag it, just to keep a nice, nice fine point on it. And so with the, the turps, that just really just breaks it down and enables it to get it nice and thin and flowy. So we've got to look after these little brushes because they cost a few bob. Sable's a great material to use. Okay, so now we've done that. I'm going to just screw this up a little bit. I've got a fine center which is about there, I guess, near enough to good enough. I'm just going to wipe out these wings. So that's why it's a handy little style to use because um, because the gloss undercoat and it's so slippery and shiny we can just scrape off what we don't need. So realistically, we don't need any applied white. We're just going to use what we've already got on the background here. I'll get rid of that. Start again. And even though this is oil color, because it's so thin and I've wiped most of it off, it's actually going to dry quite quite quickly within a day or so it should be nice and dry. There you go, look at that. Beautiful. All right. Actually I could stick some more wings in there. They've obviously got four wings. But um, for the balance of this, I'm just going to leave those two. They could be behind each other, for example. Um, or I could, could put them in now, but I think this is nice. I like the composition. So I'm going to leave it like that. 
Okay. We'll flip him upside down. Pick up a bit of this dark again. I want a bit of a dry brush. I don't want this too wet for what I'm about to do now. So I'm dry that turps off a bit. Just pick up a bit of the drier mix. Just dab that off. Well, that's pretty dry. There you go. On the palette, it's nice and soft. I'm just going to put a little bit of shade in here. So once again, not a lot of pressure. Just letting the brush just float across. So too much paint on the brush or too much pressure, I'm going to, it's going to come across really dark and big blobs and I don't want that. I just want this nice, soft, gentle bit of shadow. Notice I always pull out this silly stick, but I need it to lean on because otherwise I get the shakes up and make a big mess. It's good you can, this is an old golf club actually. One that the head fell off, I probably got a bit mad on a bunker shot or something, but I thought oh, this will work well, so I've just wrapped a bit of tissue and it's really good for anything fine or detailed just to rest on. They call it a marl stick, M-A-H-L and they're a handy little thing to have. Okay. So always got to be very careful at this stage because if I drop this now and make a big mess or scratch it, it's going to be really awkward to, to fix it, any mistakes, because I've already got all this on. So if I slipped and rubbed something off here, it's going to be really awkward to fix. I'd virtually have to start again. And if I needed to, I could just get a big rag Covered in turps and just wipe the whole thing off right now and start again if you have to. So, this is coming together. So once again, a bit of this dark colour of the burnt sienna and Prussian blue. You can even use reds with blues, um, whatever, as long as it's a nice dark colour, as opposed to just black. All right, so where am I going to go? Let's make this. Um, So I've got a bit of terps on here to thin it down. And the size of that body to the wings is probably a little bit small, so I'll make that a bit bigger. Just fatten him up a bit. He did a good feed or something. Have a look at a dragonfly, his head's always got that little bit bigger part up here in the body. So there's just enough turps just to soften and loosen all this paint so it just slides on pretty easy. So not every painting has to take hours or days or weeks. You can actually surprise yourself sometimes just doing quick sketches and quick paintings like this. I 
was in the rainforest the other day with a friend and we were doing some sketching in the creek. There's a beautiful, beautiful bright blue dragonfly perched on a rock next to us. Just gorgeous, beautiful colour. Up here on the mountain where I live in the rainforest we get bright red ones as well. All sorts of colours, greens. Alright, so I'm just going to take all the paint off that brush. That's just quite terpsy and I'm going to take some of this paint off. And this will just make the different segments of the dragonfly. So that's just a really wet terpsy brush, not too wet so it drips, otherwise we're in trouble. But just to give you enough moisture to pull that paint straight off. It's starting to look nice. And that just brings in a lot of the detail. It looks really detailed, but it's it's really quite simple. And we want them eyes to jump out, so it's nice and carefully. Pull the paint off there. Big googly eyes. There you go. There's a little bit more detail in these. fine brush put some little details in so this is a really tiny little brush here it's quite fine it's like a little needle almost but it's got a nice long bristle so it's a good reservoir so you can get a really nice long line if you ever need to do um, any sort of long line fencing wire or just um, in the landscape or or anything just just to be able to drag and get this beautiful big long long line without having to stop every five minutes to fill your brush up it's good so it's a zero number zero so it's quite fine so we'll get this nice and fluid with the terps just keep running that in and give it a little twirl here we go get some pupils in here Give him a bit of character. We'll give him some legs. Of stability when he pulls up for a feed. Okay, so um, really quite quick, quick sketch and really effective. Um, we can do all sorts of things too to add to it. We start putting some colour in, or 
you can leave these wings the way they are, but straight away, just to get that really quick, effective little sketch that's saying quite a bit. Um, once again, just take some of that paint off. And then we've got this little roll of paper sharpened up. You can buy these at any, any art store. So they're always good just for scratching through and take some of that paint away, give you a little bit more detail. Good. So that's almost finished virtually. We could add a little bit of um, a little bit of colour and texture to those wings to make them a bit more interesting. So I'll just put a little bit of white out for that. Um, a little brush. A little soft brush. I might even just put a tiniest. So see, I've put the paint on the end of this, but it's dry. There's no terps on that, so it's quite dry. So it's only going to come off really thin. I'll put a little tiny bit of colour into there. Because the blue with those reds and yellows, just add a little bit of bit of excitement, get another little brush, get the right one, right brush for the right job, it's a bit big. I think that'll do, that's nice and soft. So these are just bristle brushes, really cheap, really easy to get at most art stores. Get a bit of this white on here. Just twist that brush over and follow that line. colour jump, that little bit of um, highlight just to really push those wings out. There you go. And I quite like a little bit of brush stroke action there. Don't try and get too pretty with it or blend it too much. I think a few brush strokes gives it that extra bit of movement and character. So, so realistically, that's a pretty quick way to do a oil sketch with a really good result. It just doesn't take much time at all. Presto, away we go. So if you want, you can always, um, we could get some really nice yellows or blues and add through to these lighter parts and dress it up a little bit. Or I actually quite like the simplicity of this one. So that nice dark tunnel-y look into the, you know, through the grass and the nice sunny bit in the background. Seems to jump out nice. I might just put a tiny little bit of a 
Once again, I don't want this too wet. I'll try and use a little bit of a dry mix without getting too much terps on it. Get a lot of that off on the palette. Just sharpen them edges up a little bit. Just a tiny bit more definition, especially towards the base there. And most people that see your finished work, they'll think you've been on it all blooming day. You know, and it's, it's just such a, a nice, free, easy style, this. It's really, really quite simple. And obviously the more you do, the easier it gets. But um, there you go, a quick oil sketch, beautiful color. It's all too easy. Thanks very much.